Hello friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor here. We want to welcome you to our Friday evening Bible question of the week, where today we're going to be talking about an interesting issue. Should a Christian wear jewelry? Now, I, I'm a little concerned that uh, after I share this with you, a, a number of you are going to defriend me. And uh, But, you know, I'm prepared for the outrageous fortune and slings and arrows if I can just be faithful to the word. I know that you want to know what does the Bible actually say. Let me read you a few verses just to kick this study off. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but that which becomes women professing godliness with good works, not with the gold and pearls and costly array. Uh, now I want to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Who's adorning? Speaking of the women. Who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning, the plating of the hair and wearing of gold and putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. Now when we talk about whether or not Christians, men or women, should be wearing jewelry, we're talking about a biblical ideal. We're not talking about what may have happened in history or what some people do. And I want to say right from the outset, there are going to be thousands, indeed millions of Christians in heaven that may have worn jewelry. But we want to know what best pleases the Lord. What do the scriptures teach on this? And I think you'll find as you go from cover to cover in the Bible, that when Christians uh, spend a lot of time taking money, to adorn their physical bodies, it can become a distraction. You know, Jesus said, let your light so shine. He's talking about the inner light. He didn't say, let your cross, or your gold, or your pearls so shine. He wants it to be the inner light. For example, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, uh, what do you think they made the golden calf out of? And they ended up worshiping. It was the jewelry. And you can read about this in Exodus 32, verse 2. Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings that are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and your daughters. And it's in the wives and sons and daughters today. So all the people broke off the golden earrings that were in their ears, and they brought them to Aaron, and he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And this were, these were the treasures that they had spoiled from the Egyptians. Now, there's nothing wrong with gold in and of itself, or pearls. Jesus talks about a man that found a pearl of great price. But these things had real value because they were rare and precious gems or minerals. But to wear them, it's kind of like wearing your money. Uh, why would you do that? And so, um, you know, I think the Bible discourages this. They got them from the Egyptians. They ended up turning it into a god. Now, there are a lot of Christian men and women. I know that they may wear some jewelry, but uh, there's always a risk that there are some people who are insecure about their appearance. They don't feel like they have enough value, and they try to increase their perceived self-worth by wearing valuable things. And, uh, you know, I've never known of anyone who looked at a Christian and thought they were a better Christian because they wore more jewelry. Indeed, the opposite has occurred. A few years ago, a number of televangelists got into trouble for a variety of scandals, and someone wrote a song, Would Jesus Wear a Rolex? Because these televangelists, the often prosperity preachers, were brandishing their, their gold and their pearls, and, and uh, the extravagance and the ostentatious appearance turned the world off, and the world was mocking these professed Christians, because the bottom line is really, what would Jesus do? The Bible says, in all things, we ought to pattern our lives after him. Can we picture Jesus boring holes in his nose or his ears and hanging jewels off of them? You know, the Bible tells us that um, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And again, it's the custom of the pagans that would go and poke holes in their bodies and cut themselves. You can read in Leviticus 19.28, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. Uh, we're not to cut ourselves in the flesh for the dead or for ornamentation. Our bodies are holy. You can read in 1 Kings 18, 28, the priests of Baal, they, cust, they cut and they pierce themselves to please their diabolical God. You can read where this demon-possessed man in Mark chapter 5, that he went about and he cut himself with stones. And uh, 
I guess you could say that the devil believes in body piercing because look what he did to Jesus. But it's not God's plan for us. We're to treat our bodies as holy. While I'm on the subject, and I won't spend long on it, the Bible says you should not be printing any tattoo marks on your body. Uh, our bodies are holy. And I know that's just gone wild these days. So um, it says again in 1 Corinthians 3.16, Don't you know that you are the temple of God? The Spirit of God dwells in you. Deuteronomy 14, 1 and 2. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves. You, you are a holy people. But in the beginning, when the people misbehaved and they made that golden calf in, uh, at Mount Sinai, what did God say to them later? The Lord says in Exodus 33, 5, He said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of you in a moment and consume you. Therefore now put off your ornaments from you that I might know what to do unto you. You know, not bedecking ourselves is a sign of humility. And as we're the people who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, we should be modest and humble in our appearance. I know one thing, in the judgment day, I will not stand before the Lord. And the Lord is not going to say to me, Doug, I can't let you in because you didn't wear enough jewelry. Whenever you're in doubt, do the safe thing. And so, you know, I've just decided I'm going to follow these scriptures that say, let it not be the gold and the pearls and the outward adorning. Not to mention these things cost money. And, you, add, you know, you want to ask, um, how far do you want to go? And while you're on the subject, the principle is not just in your tire. It's in your home, your car. Christians shouldn't be ostentatious and flamboyant. Um, when Jacob wanted to meet with the Lord, I'm going to read to you from Genesis 35, verse 1. God said to Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar to God. Return to the Lord and worship God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Then Jacob said to his household and all that were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, change your clothes, let us arise and go to Bethel. I'll make an altar to God who called to me, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave Jacob all the foreign gods that were in their hands and the rings that were in their ears. And Jacob buried them under an oak by Shechem. Notice the comparison between they turned over the foreign gods they'd been collecting, idols, and jewelry. These things often went hand in hand in the Bible. And... Um, you know, when you look in Revelation, you see two women are pictured. In Revelation 12, you've got the Church of God. She's clothed with purity and light. The sun, the moon, the stars, the light that God made. You go to the counterfeit church, you find in Revelation 17, and it's a counterfeit light. It's gold, pearls, uh, it's uh, earthly ornamentation, so to speak. And so this is really a question of... Um, Modesty. Now, I know what I'm saying is not very popular, and some people are going to be offended by this. And they say, why would you make such a big deal over such a little thing? But that's the point. Maybe it's not such a little thing with some people, and that's why it's so difficult. But I'm of the opinion, the Bible teaches that Christians should lay aside their, their uh, wearing of jewelry. Um, it's interesting that you can read in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 20, when the Lord comes, and that Point, people are going to cast away their idols of silver and gold to the rats and the bats and the moles. It's going to be worthless. Isaiah talks about the daughters of Zion who walk with outstretched necks. And it talks about their rings and their jewels and their ornamentation. And he says, he talks about the pride of the daughters of Zion. And that's in Isaiah chapter 3. And so, you know, as you look at the panorama of things you find in the Bible, Oh, why we're on the subject, someone's going to say, well, what, what about a wedding ring? Now, first of all, wedding ring, there's nothing in the Bible that says you need to wear a wedding ring. This is something that's come from tradition. It springs from paganism. Again, I want to reiterate, there are a lot of dedicated, spirit-filled Christian people that wear wedding rings. I choose not to. I just, I, I don't want to see how close to tradition and paganism I can be. I want to see how close to the Bible I can be. And uh, give you a little history on it. For instance, you can read John Henry Newman. He was a cardinal in the Church of Rome. He wrote that Constantine, in order to recommend the new religion of Christianity to the heathen, 
he transferred to it the outward adornments to which they, the heathen, had been accustomed in their own. It's not necessary to go into a subject with the diligence of Protestant writers. They've made us familiar for most of this. But the use of temples and the uh, dedicated to the particular saints, incense, candles, holy water, processions, the ring in marriage, even the Catholic Church admits that the marriage ring was introduced by pagan Rome into Christianity to make Christianity more appealing and tolerable to the um, uh, pagans. Uh, further proof for this, in most of the early King James Bibles, there's actually a statement that's called the Millenary Petition because a thousand Protestant or Puritan pastors were appealing to King James. Among things they were appealing is that they were not required to give the sign of the cross anymore, the wearing of a cap or a white gown of the clergy, the use of the ring be dropped from the marriage ceremony. The Puritans and Protestants all believe this. Uh, you could read a quote by uh, John Wesley, who is, of course, a, a Protestant minister, one of the great revivalists. He said, I exhort you to wear no gold or pearls or precious stones. I do not advise women to wear rings, earrings, or necklaces. It is true these are little, very little things. Therefore, if they're not worth defending, therefore give them up, let them drop, throw them away without another word, else a little evil may cause much pain in the flesh. A little self-indulgence may hurt your soul, and it could make your brother stumble by your example. So this is just, I'm just covering the tip of the iceberg here. I think there's a lot in the Bible we don't hear about Christian appearance, ornaments, uh, modesty. And uh, I'd like to encourage you, if you want to know more on the subject, I have a book we'll share with you for free. It's called Jewelry, How Much is Too Much? It gives more detail, all of these scriptures and many others. Just click on the link bottom of this YouTube and you'll find out how you can get a free copy and uh, then share it with your friend. God bless you. We'll study his word together again next week.